Hi, everyone. This is Coach DeMarco, and you're not going to want to miss today's episode of Get Better Basketball Live. I have Mark Cassio from Courtside Consulting, who is also the head coach of Catholic High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Coach Cassio has seven district titles, has been to five Final Fours, and in 2012, he won the Louisiana State Championship. Another Get Better Basketball Live is up now. Hi, everyone. This is Coach DeMarco with Get Better Basketball Live. And today I have Coach Mark Cassio from Catholic High School. I'm excited to have you on today, Coach. Excited to be here, man. We have, uh, we've had a lot of Twitter conversations, so good to finally do this over Zoom. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love everything you do on social media, and I definitely follow your stuff. And I know, like, you're a hot commodity these days. I see a lot of coaches <laughs> reaching out to you and following you on Twitter. So I said, I need to sit down and talk with this man and learn a little bit more about, about what you're doing. And, um, you know, I, I see a lot with your, your offense specifically and, um, you know, drive in space. I know you talk about pace and space. And I'm just curious, um, a little bit of background. How, how did you come across this, this flow type of offense, this style? Is this something you've always done or what's your background and how did you get to this point where it just seems like such a cool system that you have going this, this flow? Yeah, uh, man, I wish I was doing this all along. Uh, I, I'm not that smart though, but I think I did stumble across it probably a little earlier than, than other coaches. And um, I started, I have a motion background. So I was a, a five out motion, uh, you know, online upline, man to man. And I loved it. I loved the unselfishness of it where it was really positionless. Everybody got a touch and, and we all shared the ball. And I felt like we were really teaching kids how to play basketball. And all that's true with motion. Um, long story short, I, you know, the dribble drive stuff really started to catch on. And I'm always trying to be on the, the cutting edge of things. So, um, as soon as I felt like I could teach it and run it, we did. And, and I think our players enjoyed that style. But there was also something missing there. So I just started trying to tweak it. And I got a lot of help from some great coaches to do this. And uh, this is, you know, since 2010, uh, this has changed so much. And there's been a lot of sleepless nights. You know, a lot of the clips I, I show on Twitter are obviously positive plays. but. Um, you know, we haven't always looked like that. It's been a process. So um, my evolution is going from, you know, motion, which is somewhat conceptual to, to kind of all in has been, a, has been a, a steady process. And what I tell coaches, I just try to help them shorten that process for them. Can you talk a little bit about um, some of, you mentioned some coaches that might've inspired you maybe with the system or that you learned from along the way. Can you, can you share with us some of those coaches that, you know, inspired you as you continue to evolve and, um, you know, transition with this offense? Yeah. So, um, you know, Kemper Todd was, was uh, you know, the high school coach that, that was doing the motion stuff and, and he gave me a lot. And um, actually, you know, I took a head coaching job and, and he, he called me and said, Hey, I'm going to watch Tulane in New Orleans practice, you know, welcome to come. And that was kind of what we did as clinics. We'd go spend three days with a program and, so I go there and um, I'm running dribble drive at this point. He's still running motion uh, at his program. And kind of the pre-practice stuff was a lot of, you know, drop zone, back cut, post teeing up. And I'm like, oh, well, they run dribble drive. This is perfect. But then they started playing and they're setting screens and they're just flowing and it was just beautiful. And um, the assistant, the associate head coach there was Doug Novak, who, uh, if you're a basketball guy or girl, uh, you, you know who Doug Novak is. And um, so Doug was was awesome to me. I mean, I spent three days with their staff and, and I'm I'm right down the road from New Orleans. So any chance I could get, I was going to New Orleans and uh, me and Coach Novak would I would either watch him do four man workouts. We'd get on the whiteboard. He was just so you know selfish with his time that I owe a ton to him. And we still have a lot of similarities. But. Um, since he, you know, he was an assistant then now at Bethel and he, you know, he still plays with the post and, and they do a lot of Princeton stuff, but he's obviously a great drive and space coach. And he's been a, a huge influence on me and I've just kind of continued to make it mine and tweak it. And, and we still share ideas. 
can you talk a little bit about how this has evolved from from your early days kind of with the drive and space type of offense and this flow type of offense to you know where you are now and I, I think the second part I want to ask because you seem so cutting edge with the game and you're always ahead of the curve from what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing. So where do, you see your, where, yeah, where do you see yourself going next? So like from, I guess, take us through how it's evolved, but maybe where do you see those next steps for your, your team, your program over the next couple of years? And I, I know that's a tough, that's a tough question, but I'm, I'm curious if you're thinking about some new trends in the game. Yeah, no, I like that. That's interesting. So, uh, quick evolution of it is um so i was motion i was dribble drive got a job that you know i don't, I don't want to say pressure i think every job has pressure but they had won a few state titles right before i got there so honestly i didn't trust dribble drive enough you know i just maybe it was i just wasn't a good enough coach to run that or you know it's the old you know what if they play zone what if they play pack line i didn't have the answers for that so i wasn't going to figure it out with this group so we went back to motion but we started playing way more free in it and we were lucky enough to win a state title and um went back and watched the film just not really breaking it down it was just kind of like holy cow we just want a state title like i got to relive this and as i was watching film of every game it's like really man, our players were, were getting it done. It really wasn't, you know, you could say the offense gave us spacing and gave us movement, but every offense you can pick spacing and movement, you know, it was really nothing special that I was doing. I had some phenomenal players that at the end of the day, they were, they were doing things that helped us win. It really wasn't a whole lot about me. So it kind of put in that mindset of we don't need to, to do all this offensive stuff all the time you know um offense doesn't have to be a whole lot of stuff and and drill so um really since then i just i've looked at offense through a different lens where you know spacing can be a create action instead of a screen and uh, so it's definitely evolved from from there to to incorporating a lot of princeton when we were four out again that's that's a novak influence um, to now it's, it's been so open that we can incorporate anything into it, whether it's ball screens or handbacks or down screens or player screens. It's just, it's such a, it's almost like a blank canvas where you can move concepts in and out. So kind of going to your, your next part of your question of where do I see it going? I mean, we have already made, uh, tons of tweaks just for next year. And it's funny because during the season, you know, we, we've had some really good seasons in the last two years. You know, I think we've, we've been um, last two years, we're 61 and 11 or something. So what we're doing is working. And during the season, I'm like, well, OK, we got this thing figured out. And uh, and then all of a sudden the off season comes and, and you have like eight new things you want to incorporate. And that means eight things probably have to go. So every year it's got a different flavor. And um, next year, I think with our group, we're going to set a lot more flares. That's something that's been a staple for us. but we're getting into flare game. We're doing a lot of the zoom, uh, you know, bringing the screener back to the action and, and getting some handbag stuff and that'll open up some ball screens. So it, it's a lot of stuff that we've done in the past that we tweak, just, we add some stuff, we bring some stuff back and every year it's just got its own little, little flavor to it. I had a chance to talk with uh, Kramer Soderberg who uh, talked about Virginia's motion offense and his father is uh, assistant coach at Virginia and he was a great basketball player and now a division three assistant coach. And uh, within that offense, they, they use, you know, flare screens to really initiate their action. Um, what, what is it about the flare screen? I, I saw within that, you know, kind of motion system, which was more of a continuity, which is a little different from what you guys are doing, but what is it about the flare screen that you like that you want to, you know, makes you want to incorporate it more in your offense? Um, one, I just, I just love the, the action of it. I think it's, um, although it's a common action, I think teams spend far more time preparing for down screens or away screens. A conversation with a coach from Ohio today, and we're talking about just keeping the floor open, where now we can, we can screen, and a, and a misconception is that we don't screen a whole lot. We actually screen, but we screen as much as you make us. So if you're going to be a good defensive team, we're going to screen more. Um, quick analogy I always use a baseball analogy where if a pitcher can just pump fastballs why would he mess around with off speed so our fastball is going to be driving space if you make us get to an off speed pitch great we're going to start screening you but if not why are we going to mess around with it the guys would just rather play so 
Um, I like flares because they keep the floor open. Um, a lot of times down screens, you're bringing defender into the paint or around the paint, and then we're curling in, which is great. Um, it's just not how we choose to create advantages. So our, our screens, instead of creating a lot of catch and scores and putting pressure on the rim, we create a lot of catch with advantage and drive it into the rim. So uh, I think flare screens keep the floor open and give us a, you know, an, an opportunity to create that advantage for a drive. Yeah, flare screens are tough to defend too. As a you know, kind of a defensive minded coach, you know, you're gonna hug that player tight and they can kind of curl off of that. They can obviously fade out, which is kind of the initial option right. off any flare screen. But there's there's reads that you have off of it that really put you know defenses in a bind. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and it does really space the floor out as as you mentioned. And um, in my previous conversation, that we talked a little bit about that and the benefits of, of using it. I'm curious when teams play against you, you know, what's, what's that, you know, for them mentally, you know, they, they hear, I hear pace and space, drive and space. What's it like to play against your team? Yeah. You know, we, uh, you can ask our JV guys in practice, but uh, <laughs> they, uh, and, and, you know, I think the main thing is uh, what, what I think our opponents prepare for first is our pace. You know, I hear in, in games, uh, ball goes through the net or, or we get a rebound and coaches yelling, get back, get back, get back. And I think when you play with pace, you automatically get that coach thinking of game plan and how they're going to adjust. Are, are they not going to adjust? Are they going to press? Are they going to just get everybody back? And, you know, there's advantages for us to both. If you're not going to adjust, the game's going to be in our favor. If you get every ba everybody back, well, we're going to rebound really well. So I feel like that gives us, you know, some type of advantage. Uh, the next thing I would just say is our spacing. Um, you know, it's funny. I, a lot of coaches will say what you do is not complicated. It's just we haven't guarded that spacing before. And uh, I think that's good because when you're the outlier, you know, and teams only have a couple of days to prepare for you, it gives you somewhat of an advantage. Um, but also, you know, I think a lot of coaches, um, and I don't mean this in a, in a critical way, they just don't know what we do because we can look different from game to game. Some coaches will see us play and, and I'll get a call and say hey coach I love your motion offense and then another coach will come up to me the next day at a tournament and say hey I'm a dribble drive guy too and uh, another coach will say like hey I, I see you run some Princeton and it's just because it, it can be a mixed bag and it's all kind of depending on how you guard but it's all uh, what I hope that they see when they scout us or what they're preparing for is five players that are playing free um, willing to, to take chances make plays make mistakes uh, but all five players are really aggressive and we're keeping the defense on their heels. Coach, can you, you've, you know, I, the spacing, I've, I've seen some clips, but for people who are watching this, I would love to see that a visual. Do you have a, a clip or two that you could show us um, what your spacing typically looks like? And maybe even like when you're spaced really well and maybe something where you're not spaced as well, where you might be a little more critical or, or at least the first one where we see that good spacing the first thing that we look at is just spacing the floor, right? And I think most teams do it in a more traditional way, like the four out way, even if you're dribble drive, you know, you got the, the dunker spot in there. What we've got to move to is this offset alignment. So no matter if we're four out, five out, what we want to do is, is really stretch you vertically. And I think that's what teams aren't prepared for. Again, I think that makes you make decisions. Um, you know, are you going to come out here and pressure us this far away from the basket? So uh, this is really our half court alignment. It, it's got a two side. So I'll, I'll throw some clips on here. And, and what we'll do is we'll be able to see some uh, what you can start in transition. And I'll show some transition clips. Uh, and then that way we can uh, we can get a feel for, for the pace of it, uh, the space of it. And then, you know, how we put pressure on the defense. So we're the team in black here where we just got to steal. And uh, we like to be really fl free flowing uh, in, in the full court. So um, our guys, you know, we have the two sided break up here, which is going to match our half court alignment. And uh, we just tell our point guard, go until somebody stops you. Although most of the time we want the ball to cross half court in the air. So here's an example of, again, a defensive rebound. And you can see we're already running uh, as we get the rebound. So. Um, again, guys free to shoot the three. And, and, you know, I just think when you do this, it's just wears on you. Um, and, 
here's a here's an example of where we're scored on and we're already leaking out and we're just getting those points right back so again i, I just think that forces teams to make some trade-offs here's an example of you know not great spacing in transition honestly this is not matching our half court alignment but we still don't need a quote unquote run offense to get a shot so uh, if we look at this possession again, because this is my favorite phase of the game. So I would call this early offense for us. So it's not a secondary. We're, we're definitely not running secondary because I think players, I'm not a good enough coach to teach it, to play fast and run a secondary. But what we've done is our pace. Um, we actually do get to decent spacing here. What, what I like is, you know, if the ball is driven in, we're going to end up in somewhat of a four out one in alignment. Uh, and from here, we have created an advantage. We've brought two to the ball. We flattened the defense to where now our job is just to keep that advantage. And I think uh, that's the that's the funnest part for me to coach because you know transition. It's like you know you know you're getting a basket there. I think when you get those early offensive possessions, it shows that your concepts and the things that you work on in practice past transition are showing up too. Coach, just a, a question in terms of, um, you know, your offense and, and your spacing. And obviously we saw some really good examples there. What, what dictates or what determines, um, you know, you talked a little bit about how you use some screens and you do some screening. So what determines that in terms of your offense? Is it where the ball is on the court? Is it certain pass? Is it very, you know, very player dependent it could it could be any time down the court um or is it game plan based where some teams you know that you're going to screen a little bit more um or you're gonna you know space a little bit more and maybe not use as many screens um what, what really dictates that for you guys as, as a team yeah great question so we really have two series within our offense you know the drive and space series um, we've got some, some rub action and, and just our drive and space game that we use to create advantages. And, uh, I think it's important when you're, when you're talking, you know, are we a screening team? Are we a driving team is to, to clearly define advantages. So we use the Saba terminology with small advantage, big advantage in neutral. So we will tell our players, uh, if we're ever neutral for too long. Uh, so we're always, like I said, we're going to, we're going to try to crack the shell. We're going to try to put pressure on you from uh, from the get go with pace and space. But you know, I've got some examples of a screening game for us. So what we might do, this is going to be some examples of uh, a flare screen that we've talked about. So in this case, oh, we've got a drive. And when we are driving from the wing here, they've just maintained a neutral position. So when we throw it across, we could stay in our drive and space game. Uh, like our rule here, um, we've got a couple different rules on, on, on passes, but um, if we throw down, we would typically cut away. So as player two starts to cut away here, if he sees three setting a flare, well, now we got that nice flare screen where the paint still opened up. And we've got opportunity to shoot or drive this close out. And we've created a triple gap on this side of the floor. So, um, you know, we'll watch another one here. And what we'll likely see is uh, some, some drives that create no advantage. So that's one drive that creates no advantage. Here's another drive where they switched. So now we've maintained neutral to where now – we can continue to go drive in space, but it's completely player led. If we get into screening game, uh, then we get that inside flare. And we really love that screen. So over the years, we've done some different things. You know, this is an example of us getting a, uh, a ball screen. You know, we, we, even though we're five out, I think one of the, the things that we've tried to do is incorporate some, some same actions that we would get if we were four out one in. So, in this case, again, we've got, you know, we're neutral here. No advantage has been created. So we get this player. We're going to wave him through because he's denied. And then now we can just kind of get some hand back ball screen stuff where if we can't get downhill or if we can't beat you with our fastball, then, uh, then we're going we're to get to our, our change of pace game or our screening game. Yeah, I really like that. I mean, I can see how, how challenging it is between the transition game 
and then you know uh, the IQ of your players. You know they don't they don't gain an advantage, and then you guys go into some different screen actions. Um, you can see how challenging that is to defend. And I have to ask um, for you in practice, what are the things that you're doing? I know you talked about how you like to really keep things simple. What are you doing in practice? I guess twofold. Um, one is transition wise maybe a favorite drill that you use with your players or a small side of game and the same thing, um, you know, offensively. Um, and I guess specific on the offensive end, not just transition shooting wise, it seems like you have some great shooters and they're working off screens. Is there a favorite shooting drill or something that you do with your players um, to really help them, uh, you know, feel that game kind of experience? Yeah. So um, I think I can kind of answer that with, with just a couple different things here. So, um, with transition, you know, I think there's a lot of things that we do uh, just to build our pace. I wouldn't, you know, imagine coaches out there would, would think it's tough to, to install. But uh, with a lot of this stuff, you know, a lot of my answers is just it's in our DNA. So these are just examples of us getting some finishing in. And then when we finish the drill, we're going to finish with an outlet. So we're always going to get to the next play. You can see this player. They're not getting next play. Other group was. So then it just wasn't part of their DNA yet. In this case, this is a three on four closeout drill where we're going to transition on air. Uh, and it just helps build pace. This group can be next uh, where we're just always building that pace element in. And I think um, this is what I think coaches do a really good job of this at the beginning of the year where. Um, you know, that's on their mind. And I think everybody wants to play fast in October, November, but, but doing these transition things just where it becomes a way of life in your program. I think that's really where you're going to see a lot of dividends. Uh, as far as small sided games go, let me go up here to the. Coach, I just want to say, as you're pulling up that next clip, I, I love how you are incorporating transition and really weaving it into all those different drills. I love playing four, four on three, five on four. It's one of my favorite things to do but you talk about building it into your DNA and I, and regardless of your system, uh, there's ways to do that. And I love how you guys want to get out and run and everything you do, you're incorporating that transition piece in, into that. So I think that's, I think that's a great coaching point for coaches who are watching this and saying, whatever their system is, you got to find ways to really use the word DNA, really build that into the DNA of your players. And I think that's a great example of it. So I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, and I think it all goes back to, you know, if you have less on your practice plan, if you have less stuff that you're doing offensively, you can dedicate more time into finding those ways to, to get some extra reps. Um, you know, as far as small-sided games go, uh, we organize ours, and, and again, using the same language as we would with our players, with big advantage, small advantage to big advantage, advantage to neutral, neutral, disadvantage. So uh, we, if I want to – you know, I think it's important when we're planning practice. I think, um, you know, with all the great content that's out there on Twitter in particular, you know, when you're initiating those chats, there's just su such great content out there. But we got to be careful not to just say, I'm going to do this small-sided game because it's good. We, to me, it's not the drill. It's what the drill creates, right? So if I see a small-sided game on Twitter, it's okay. What environment is that shaping for the player? So for instance, like a, um, uh, uh, we're talking transition. So if we're going to go um, four on two conversion, all right, this is, this is a favorite of ours. It's a variation of the drill that everybody does where a lot of people do it three on three, where you start three on two and you run the third guy in from half court. And in this case, our orange team is going to start with four players. The black team has two players. One's out of the frame here by the basket. And then the black team's going to have two guys in the front of the line. When the ball crosses half court, they've got a touch in the circle. So they usually give five in the circle. So what condition are we creating here? Well, we're creating a game-like transition um, condition where orange has three seconds maybe to score with advantage. And the black team is focused on getting neutral, right? So um, this is a great one because it's, it's very game-like. It's not like we're just playing four on two, but also we're staying in that early offense phase. In this clip, which you're going to see, it's one of my favorite clips of practice, is the ball is 
just going to keep moving. We're going to make quick decisions, but we're running zero offense. Okay. So this is pace and space or drive and space game to a T because we don't run a offensive action, but I think a lot of the coaches would agree that this is good basketball. And I think that's the, that's the challenge is, you know, we're watching the NBA and we see these one mores and, in the great ball movement. And then we go to practice and, and work on 97 set plays where you're really not creating that environment. And, and I was guilty of it. You know, I would see a, a clip, uh, you know, I'd see some diagrams of the Spurs and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to install this and we're going to play like the Spurs where, you know, that's, a, that's a very small part of what they do. It's, it's really, you know, the, the principles they play by the philosophy they play by. It's not the play. Yeah. I love how you're talking about, you know, and not getting really into the offense and them just, you know, playing basketball there. And your team, just watching them here, the ball movement, the extra pass, driving, maybe creating a small advantage, not enough, and then skipping. And how many times the defense had to close out and, uh, you know, scramble. So it's obviously making your defense work uh, pretty hard there as well. Um, yeah. So just thinking about, you know, this offense as a whole, um, I know there's a lot of coaches who are – watching this and, and, and really thinking about this might be something I want to do with my team. I'd like to know more about it. I know that you have uh, courtside consulting um, and you do a lot of consulting and really a, across the country from what I'm seeing, you go to you travel to different places. So could you talk a little bit about that and maybe how coaches can, can look you up, get in contact if they, if they're interested in learning more from you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it, it really happened organically. I feel like I've, I've been doing consulting just with sharing the game and, and, and you know, other people pouring into me. But um, this all started with, with coaches being interested in this style of play, uh, asking questions and, and phone conversations. And, um, you know, I'd start watching film and I was just like, man, this, this, this isn't right. Like, we got to do this better. So, um, now what I do is I partner with coaches who, who like this style of play, but it's, it's really a lot more than that. I mean, last night we were talking about team meetings and non-negotiables in your program. And, you know, today we were, we were talking some defensive stuff and just some, some program stuff. So it's really turned into a 360 degree kind of coaching experience, but, um, I have traveled across the country, um, done clinics with with private, you know, coaching staffs where I just spend three days with them and their team and uh, just kind of give them A to Z on how to do this and really equip them with the tools because, you know, I got, I mentioned earlier, I had a phone conversation with a coach in Ohio and we did a webinar together, a one-on-one -on -one webinar. And I showed him kind of, he just asked questions. We spent an hour together, showed him as much as I could. And he, he texted me and said, you know, he booked a talk on the website and said, Hey, uh, we got dribble weavish at times. We didn't move the ball as well as your team does. And uh, so we spent, you know, 45 minutes on the phone today talking, but I, I tried to tell him that, and if I don't, if I don't know, I can give you solutions, but I don't really know what the problem is, you know, like, okay, you're not moving the ball, but is that a technical problem? Is that a tactical thing? Um, I, I don't know what it is unless I see film of your team and I'm working with you on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's really where the benefit of the mentorship program has come in is, is I'm a 24 hour sounding board for you and, and all the resources and film are, are now yours. So it really, it, it equips you with the tools to become an expert. So if coaches are interested, uh, please reach out. Uh, Twitter is a great place or uh, my email, markcasio at gmail.com. But also if you go to the website, um, coachcasio.com, um, you can hit a let's talk button and you, we can just chat about, basketball you can ask questions and I'll spend as much time on the phone with you as I can so I love talking basketball I think the best part of doing the consulting has just been meeting great coaches coach just one one last point I wanted to make as we start to wrap up here um I've you know you've joined in in the get better basketball chat and you've shared out on so much more than just the you know pace and space type of offense driving space offense you've shared out uh things you do for leadership capacity in your program I'm hearing you talk tonight. You've been a dribble drive guy. You, you have experience with motion offense. So I feel like you have this wealth of knowledge about the game of basketball and a lot of different experience. And everything I've seen you share has a lot of value. Um, so if coaches are interest, interested in courtside consulting, am I hearing correctly that you would go even beyond? Maybe if coaches 
are not going to be a drive and space type of team. Maybe they want to be a motion offense team or they want to focus more on other aspects of the game or just that mentoring component. Um, do you do some of that as well? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, I have a lot of the same conversations with coaches as they'll say, coach, you know, tell me when your next webinar is. And I always tell them like, hey, when you want a webinar, you tell me. Um, you know, we don't have to do a blanket webinar where I just have a PowerPoint ready. And uh, what I like is, you know, when you book a webinar with me, you tell me what we're going to talk about. And then that way I can prepare for it. And uh, and really, a lot of times the conversation just kind of veers off to wherever that coach wants it. I think, you know, that's the that's been the the fun part. And that's been one of the biggest benefits that I offer is that um, which it, what your needs are is I, I fill that need. It's it's not. Uh, hey, I'm going to teach you this offense is I'm going to help you become a better coach and help move your program forward. That's the goal, at least. Coach, this has been one of my favorite conversations, and I've talked with a lot of great coaches out there, yourself included. But just leading up to the conversation, you're like, let's talk hoops in whatever direction you want to take it. And then you just pulled clips up instantaneously. You have a yeah. this library of, of high quality clips. And I love the opportunity to kind of talk about the flow offense we kind of free flowed a little bit here tonight and I I appreciate that because it's nice to just talk hoops and I had a chance to ask questions that I think have a lot of value for coaches so I hope they check out your website I hope they reach out to you um, in the future and and you know I'd like to have you do this again down the road I, I think uh, it's probably a lot more we could talk about and hopefully you'll uh, chime in, in some get better basketball chats as well. Absolutely. We'd love to do it again. And I'll, I'll see you on Twitter before then. Sounds good. Well, thanks so much, coach. Appreciate your time. Uh, have a great night. Thanks, coach.